And welcome to our morning devotion. Let's turn in our Bibles to Genesis chapter 28 and verses 15. It says, Behold, I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go and I will bring you back to the land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and praise you, Lord. We worship you this beautiful morning and we just pray that you would impart your truths to us through this short devotion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was thinking about this morning about the life of Jacob. Like of Jacob, like somebody, like it was Artie Kendall who said, everybody has Jacob inside of him. And that's that's amazing, very, very true, you know. And uh, I was thinking as I was reading, like Jacob at this point in his life, he's running away from Esau and then he meets God, you know, in Beersheba, where he goes to sleep, very tired, and he encounters God and he says, and God, after he gets up from there, God gives him a very amazing blessing or a promise. And he says, I will bring you back. Wherever you're going, I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bless you. And not only that, what I've spoken you is going to happen and I'll not leave you, not forsake you. Listening to this great promise and blessing, yet Jacob leaves and he leaves to his own walk and he leaves to serve Laban for next 28 years. Now he comes back after 28 years, he chooses to have God in his life. He comes back, he has an encounter, very soon he's going to meet his brother Esau. But before that, there's somebody else he has to meet and that is God. So we see at this in Genesis chapter 32, we see God Jacob having an amazing encounter with God. I think in, in, in all our lives, there'll be a point, maybe 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and sometimes we could go on and on, but what God has begun in your life and my life is going to be accomplished because he who began a good work is going to work in his life. I like that, isn't it? He's like the, he's, <clears throat> he's using your life and my life to accomplish what he has for us. If you look at Jacob's life, he was, a, he was a cheater, the supplanter, deceiver, but still God is work in his life. What, like when you look at Jacob's life, we have a new hope for, for all of us. Like, no, like God could use a man like Jacob and bless him. Why not us? And Jacob wrestled with God in Genesis chapter 32. We see he wrestles with God in order to receive a blessing. And he comes to a point in his life where he wants to have an encounter with God. And we will see today how God blessed Jacob. We see four points I just put down here. Number one, we see in verse 24 of Genesis 32, Jacob was alone with God. Now he sends his wife and children to the other side. And now he is standing alone with God and he's going to have a battle uh, or not a battle in a sense. Like let's read. Now he saw he did prevail with him. He touched. Okay, was, Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. I think that's so important. Sometimes so many distractions crowd us that we don't get that time alone with God. And God will bring to a point in our life that he would say, ah, you need to be alone with God. And that's what happened to Jacob. Jacob was alone with God in Genesis chapter 24. Number two, we see in verse 26, he said, let me go for the day breaks but he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Now, second thing we see, Jacob was desperately wanted to receive what God has for him. I like that, isn't it? When you come to God alone, you wanted to bless him. You wanted to hear what God has for us. And that's what happened to Jacob. Jacob was very hungry for, for God. He's alone with God. He's in, in interaction with God. And then he says, I'm not going to leave here unless I want to hear from you. I want to hear. I want to have a blessings that you have for me. And thirdly, Jacob was a broken by God. He allowed God to break him and change him. I like that, isn't it? Like he's not in verse 25 to 28. He said, uh, to him, uh, sorry, verse uh, 26, and he said, let me go for the day breaks, but he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I like that, like David, Jacob was ready to be used of God, and he was ready to be broken of God. And that's when the real blessings coming, when we allow our lives, the lives that God has given, 
we give it to God and say, Lord, use it and break it the way you want it. And then finally, Jacob was honest in verse 27 and God asked his name. He didn't say this time he was another Esau or he is somebody, but he clearly said to God, I am Jacob. The word Jacob means cheater, supplanter, deceiver. And God said, you said it right, but now because of what you did right now, I'm going to bless you. I was thinking like how God blesses Jacob. Like blessing often people think of as material blessings. Material blessing is great if God gives you, but bigger than material blessings is what God gives to a believer. I just put down the three blessings that Jacob had. Number one, he had a blessing in verse 27. And he said, I'm honest with God. Jacob, God blessed him and gave him a new name. I like that, isn't it? By the way, every believer has a new name in heaven. God has a special name, I believe, for each one of us. And, and that's going to be amazing. And God calls Jacob, no more Jacob. You are a cheater, deceiver, supplanter. But I'm going to be calling you Israel. That is Prince with God. I like that, isn't it? Like God, when God sees us from heaven, he sees us in the finished work of Christ. And he sees us with a new name. Number two, Jacob had a new walk. Remember, he had a new walk. He's been, he's been running everywhere. You know, he was running everywhere. Like he, he could do things by his own, but now his hip is out of joint. Now he cannot run anymore. He, he, he is now totally dependent on God. Can you imagine? Like that's what God brings us to a point that we cannot do without God anymore. That's what Jacob's life is. Like if you see after this, Jacob is not the same and, and, and he's totally de like dependent on God. And that's what God brings us to. And now he has no more running hand because his hip is out of joint. He's not running away to his own plans, his own purposes, but he's like consulting God and is totally dependable, uh, dependent on God. And now he has a new walk because of that, a limping walk that is like amazing. Like we see also in great men of God, God did that. And even in, Jay, in David's life, God has to take away every crutches where he is totally dependent on God alone. And finally, God gave a new identity. I think about that, a new identity. He, he met with God in that place and he called that place Peniel, face to face with God. I was thinking one day we will see him face to face, everybody. And, and what will happen when you see him face to face? Bible says we will we'll like him. Isn't that true? We will have the same like Jesus. We behold his face. And that's amazing. And Jacob had the same encounter with God and he called that place Peniel. God gave him a new identity. So God, this is what a real blessing is. Like when we, be, when we have this new walk with God and then we have a new name with God and then we have a new identity and, and God who began a good work. Like he said to Jacob, he'll accomplish. Even if it takes 28 years, I'm going to do it. Even if it takes 10 years, I'm going to do it. But ultimate purpose is to fulfill the plan that I have for you and me. Amen.